Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Connect the Knox. I'm your host, Julia Hurley, connecting Knoxville to the nation. Today's guest is someone that I have had the pleasure of meeting just recently in Knoxville, yet has a major impact on the future of Knoxville. And I want to make sure that I bring this information to each and every one of you. Meet Sam Elliott, the director of Knoxville's YP program, Young Professional. Sam, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for inviting me. It was great to have met you out in the world in real life instead of like online or something. Well, in re- IRL, in real life, that took me a very long time to figure out that hashtag. Tells you how old I am a little bit. <laughs> well, we appreciate your time today. And of course, we always start with the same question as our listeners really want to know, where are you from? Tell us about yourself, and then we'll kind of delve into a natural conversation to lead into YP. Perfect. So um, like you said, my name is Sam Elliott. I'm the Vice President of Development for the Young Professionals of Knoxville. I'm originally from Central Kentucky. I went to college there. And my degree was in, pro- in professional flight in aviation. So I'm a pilot and I fly for a private company in town. But uh, after teaching at the university in central Kentucky for about a semester, I did an internship for a, a year in Kansas. I wanted to move closer to home, be closer to my family. Knoxville is where I found a job. And I've been here for about eight years now. Yeah. And uh, basically only in the last two years have I gotten really involved in the wide variety of opportunities that Knoxville has. I'm a big and big brother, big sister. I used to volunteer weekly with Young Williams. I'm on the board for an organization called the Casa of East Tennessee, which is the Court Appointed Special Advocates Program. Helps children in foster care and juvenile court situations. But the majority of my free time in the last two years has been with YPK, the Young Professionals of Knoxville. That is an extensive resume for only being here eight years. Uh, let's let's point out that like two years of hard work will get you there. It, it's just been I've I had a lot of free time in the last two years, and I said, you know what, I'm gonna I'm gonna endeavor to to make as much of an impact as possible. I love that. I love that, and so many other young people should hear that. So say that again. <laughs> there are plenty of opportunities, especially in Knoxville, to get involved to impact the community for the better, be it about animals, be it like one-on-one mentoring, be it children, be it the elderly. The volunteers being in Knoxville and UT being the volunteer, us being the volunteer state, just means that we have an abnormally large number of nonprofit programs in the city. And there's there's a program for everybody. I have also noticed that Knox County, Knoxville City bring the opportunity to hub for not-for-profits. And we uh, we run so many different companies out of Knox County in and of itself that bringing that opportunity for business owners and business leaders and thought leaders to come together naturally brings an opportunity to volunteer and give back. Yeah. And um, the city's done a really good job of fostering that kind of mentality. The chamber, the chamber does the same thing. The greater Knoxville area, which I would say like Oak Ridge and, and Loudoun and, and Blunt County all kind of fit in. They're all the same. There's opportunities. All you have to do is just ask. This is exactly where we usually end our conversation with most interviewees as we talk about where do you see the opportunities in Knoxville for young people. So someone who is leading young people in through Knoxville, tell us about YPK. Tell us about one, the age limit, because I've already aged out. <laughs> tell us about the age restrictions, but not really a restriction, just a suggestion. And then tell us about what the goals are for this program and really and truly how it intertwines with others. Um, the Young Professionals Knoxville was founded in 2007. We're the, brown, the brainchild of a leadership Knoxville class. And they got done with the program and said, you know, we really need an environment where the next generation of Knoxville's leaders can engage with each other and talk and, and work through um, the next steps. Um, so in my position as development vice president, I've had the opportunity to go and present to numerous business organizations and clubs and, and things. And I've found that I encounter, more often than not, I encounter someone who is a former member or was on the board. I've encountered a few presidents who are CEOs of, of organizations, um, and they all have, have fond memories. So after 2007, we, hang, we were hanging out around 100 members all the way up to COVID. COVID, we, we, we bottomed out. We tried to do a lot of things online if we could, and it just didn't. I mean, it's a social organization at heart. And post-COVID, 
everybody wanted to get out. Everybody wanted to see the, see the city. Everybody wanted to get involved with something. And so we rebounded so hard, we had to restructure the entire way we, we manage the program. So we're a not-for-profit 501c6. And um, we've reached, we're approaching 300 members. So we 100 down to about 40. And then we rebounded in the last couple of years to quite a lot of involvement. YPK was founded on three basic principles, connect, develop, and serve. So we connect our members to each other and to the community by social networking events every month. We have monthly socials, and then we engage with community organizations to, to facilitate that. Um, we develop people's skills. So we have a professional development committee. Uh, we run at minimum quarterly, typically more than that, uh, kind of like seminars and, and development programs that maybe expose you to something that you've never done before. Uh, for example, like we did one recently, uh, we got one recently that's coming up that's uh, introduction to real estate investing. So if you've ever thought about how, what are the first steps, that kind of thing, I think you can speak to that a little bit. <laughs> Um, the big one for me is, um, I said, I'm a pilot. And so my leadership experience has been a lot of two people in a high stress work environment, accomplishing a mission in a shorter period of time. Um, being vice president means that I have three directors who report to me and they each have two committees. So there's six committees and it's all a flow through program. And, um, uh, it's been an adjustment and it's one of those things that I'm glad that we've done the seminar so I can learn a little bit about how other organizations operate. We've done connect, we've done develop, and then service. Every month we do a service project. Most recently we helped with fish pantries. We do river cleanups. We do um, second harvest food bank. So there's something every month going on uh, where we give back. And uh, originally that's where I started. I helped with the, the committee for the community outreach program and uh, got involved more with the leadership as, as it progressed. The last pillar that's the secret pillar in my, in my opinion is the affinity groups that we run their membership led. Um, so for example, I love to do trivia with my friends. And so once a month, I host a YPK trivia team and we're actually really, really good. <laughs> um, so I've been really impressed by our win streak so far, but um, it gives the opportunity for people who have maybe a hobby that they, they're looking for people to engage with. At least once a year, somebody does a hiking club and everybody that wants to go hiking goes hiking and now they all know each other, they all have each other's numbers and they have their own kind of like subset of hiking people off to the side doing their own projects. So the goal is inspire Knoxville's young professionals to connect, develop and serve the greater area. And I think we do a really good job. One of the things that I always tell people is YPK is, is whatever you put into it, you'll get out. So if you are interested in making friends, you'll make friends. If you're interested in figuring out how to volunteer, you'll figure it out. If you're interested in developing your professional skills, you'll you'll do that. If you're looking for something in particular, you'll find it here. That's a big increase. So tell me, <clears throat> help everybody understand, Knoxville is an aging community. It was. I'm not, Knoxville was an aging community. Knoxville has rebranded itself over a decade. Truly a total rebrand. It is now a hub and a mecca for tech companies, for education. Our schools are increasing. Uh, the University of Tennessee is adding new majors to make sure that we stay on top of what's going on in today's times. We have a lot of hiring going on in these massive corporations that are relocating here. And that requires a different level of conversation and communication with a younger generation what are you seeing as far as growth opportunities for the same young professionals who are employed here to stay here? So most young professional organizations are subsets of their chamber. We're the only one that we can find that's not owned by the chamber, but we have a very close relationship and we love the chamber and they love us. And we like that we partner together and uh, on multiple projects throughout the year, that kind of thing. They have kind of said to us, you know, your mission and the way we see it is to create an environment where people want to stay because, you know, people 25 to 35 have historically struggled to stay in Knoxville recently. And that's the majority of our membership. 85% of us are 25 to 35. You asked about the age limit. Uh, it's just 21 and over. That's the only gateway. And the word professional also, professional just means you get paid for what you do. So you don't have to feel like you have to be in finance or marketing or something like that to, to do those programs. We have plenty of those members, but we have people from all walks of life. I'm a pilot. I don't need a network. I don't need to do those kind of things. I'm here for the social aspects. What we've seen, and because I'm the development person, I do all these surveys and I see all the results, is that people moving to Knoxville find us by basically just Googling us. They're like, hey, I'm new to the area. I need to figure it out. 
over 70% of us are, have been in Knoxville for less than five years. So the majority of our members are people who moved to Knoxville, need to find that sense of community, and they reach out and they find us. What is interesting to me is how reflective the data is of if you feel connected to the community and you are involved in some kind of volunteer opportunity, the likelihood that you're going to stay in that community dramatically increases. And that's what we've worked with the chamber to work on is like, if I feel like I have friends and I have a way to volunteer and I feel like this is my city, I'm going to stay. I'm more likely to look locally for job opportunities if I need to change my job than look elsewhere. I think we really excel at at that is fi- helping people find their find their home. I love that. You excel at helping people find their community, their tribe. I think so. I think so. I mean, I've, I've been in YPK for really involved for two years and I've made lifelong friends. I can tell you right now, like these people will be with me for the rest of my life. We all know that real estate is location, location, location. Our team at Just Homes Group has the true expertise, pairing buyers and sellers with the right opportunities. Whether you're looking to buy or sell a home right here in Knoxville, Lenore City, Clinton, or Farragut, we have the expertise throughout every Knoxville surrounding area. Call Just Homes Group today. Tell everybody a little bit about the opportunities there. We have so many relocations. A lot, 90% of our podcast listeners are not from Knoxville. We interview people with Knoxville, but 90% of the people that subscribe to this podcast live somewhere else. So they're either Googling things about Knoxville and our podcast shows up, or they're clicking on something where we're talking about literally connecting Knoxville to the nation, not the other way around. Like we want to make sure that the people that we interview are Knoxville centric. And this information is really valuable. What does it cost to be a member? Are there tiered memberships? Talk a little bit about what that buy-in is, as well as kind of the time commitment. Our memberships start at our $200 for the first year and $100 for every year after that. What we've discovered, and part of my job, is employers see the benefit and are more likely, are very likely actually to sponsor a membership for, for someone. And so part of my job is going to organizations and saying, like, listen, like, I have the stats that show that if people feel com- connected to the their community, they're going to stay. Uh, would you be interested in purchasing memberships to give to your new employees for the first year to keep them involved and that kind of thing? And it's it's sold really well. So two hundred dollars is the base membership, but a lot of employers are willing to pay for it, especially if you're in an organization that maybe appreciates the the networking value. Um, not that that's the primary goal, but there are a lot of people out there that are you know interested in expanding their network. So you said the 200 was the initial, like the base membership. Talk about all of the opportunity. What what if somebody's looking in here and they're like, hey, they're kind of, they may be in the same situation you are of, I do something for a private company. I'm not necessarily an employee, so I'm not necessarily looking for networking. What is the level of membership that one can attain? And if they do have I'm not going to say the word unlimited. None of us have unlimited time to give, but in the in the grand scheme of things with a 24-hour workday among myself compared to others, I have quite a few extra hours really and truly. So, kind of what are the variables there? The $200 is the base first year and the and the $100 after that. There aren't really levels or tiers, but your time is 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 an interesting question because like I said before, it's whatever you're willing to put into it is what you'll get out of it. So, um, I have a lot of free time. I have the ability, like now, I'm technically at work, but I'm waiting for my passengers to return. And um, you can be as involved as you want to be. Now, we have people that come for the monthly show- socials. Um, in a week, I'm doing a big cookout at the lake. Like I know I've got a bunch of people signed up that they're here for the social aspect. They want to make friends. And if you wanted to be involved in party setup in professional development courses, you become part of a committee. And so we have roughly 10 committees, um, stretching from social to recruitment to professional development to community outreach. And the idea is to give people the opportunity to to input themselves into different, and different is probably the, the, the best word for it, scenarios that maybe you don't see every day. The kicker for me was always that, you know, if I wanted to go to the meeting, I could go to the meeting. If I didn't want to go to the meeting, I didn't really have to because I wasn't in charge of anything. Like, if you want to step up and be a leader, then yeah, we will take your time and we'll give you a lot of rewarding projects. I'm motivated by a, a job well done. 
And so that really pushes me to make the best event as like the best event possible. I got in, I got started last year by um, every year we do a giving event. So uh, last year it was a brunch. It was at Strongstock Farms, which is a beautiful venue if you've ever heard of it. And we did a, it felt very I don't want to say Bridgerton because we are all just kind of like brunch attired people, but we played Bridgerton music. There was croquet, there was badminton, and there was a, a beautiful back, uh, like farm, farm to table kind of style. Um, and we, we raised money for a program called Nourish Knoxville. Um, this year we haven't announced who ours is going to be, but we do big projects like that. There's also, um, if you've ever wanted to help plan an event, uh, that services hundreds of people and has like a professional venue, we do one of those every year as well. Um, so if that's what you're looking for. If you're looking for something different, we, we provide that. We're about to start our, our, latest, our latest leadership cohort for the leadership certificate program. We do our own mini version of like Leadership Knox. Um, and it's once a week for eight weeks. And you get to talk to all these community leaders who are kind of pillars of the community in, in, when you think of Knoxville's leadership. Um, so the first, first one's tomorrow. It's a panel of uh, CEOs from around the city who are coming to speak to our small cohort about you know, how they have developed their own leadership skills and developed their own styles. Um, so the time commitment is whatever you want it to be. If you want to show up once a, once a month, we'll take you. If you want to show up to every single committee meeting, I, I mean, you won't do anything else. I, th I think we have, a, we have, what, 10 committees. So there are 10 meetings, 10 evening meetings a month. If you wanted to do everything, um, what I recommend is find the one that, that fits you. Are you all just Knoxville? We span into Farragut and we started doing it. We started kind of walking into uh, Oak Ridge area because the Anderson County Young Professionals Organization has dissolved. Um, we work with kind of already pre-established organizations. Part of my job is is to make those connections with like organizations like ETEC or the young the the West Young Professionals, um, so that we can. Yeah, you know, we all have similar goals, right? We're all trying to make Knoxville better. We're all trying to make Knoxville home. And um, there's a lot of good organizations out there that we can benefit from, and they can benefit from us. Well, I know that the University of Tennessee has a new outreach program, and it's based on rural community development, meaning the very specific to um, veterinarians. So they will pay for you to go to school to become a physician, a veterinary physician. They'll pay for the entire thing if you'll spend five years in a rural community giving back to that community. And that is one of those situations where they're trying to grow the rural area, smaller town leadership per se. So I feel like that is a situation that may be a good fit there for you to not not necessarily you need 100 veterinarians in your organization today. However, that being said, that may be an idea to take off and branch to connecting with that organization and saying, hey, listen, we have professionals from all industries. Is there a possibility that that grant may extend to other things if we can get this leadership off the ground in Oak Ridge, in Lenore City, in Farragut? Not to say that those are outlying smaller spaces, but they are lacking of younger people. And reaching that situation is something that Knoxville being the hub, kind of like Atlanta's the hub, Nashville's their hub, and going outside the spokes and creating those spaces for those professionals to also feel as involved as the kids and the young people in downtown Knoxville. I mean, you definitely feel that disconnect when you're not in downtown. So um, tell me about those outreach communities and what, what that looks like and how people can get involved in those. We've been trying to listen more and more to our membership and expand the locales that we do our events. Um, a lot of people live on the west side and maybe can't make it downtown for certain events. So we've started straying further and further from just central, which I think is a big benefit because not a lot of people live in the grand scheme of things. Not a lot of people live downtown. Like we all drive to downtown. So doing things, we have a coffee and connections next week um, out in on Ebenezer, which is on the west side. So we're, ex we're excited to expand that direction. It's funny that you mentioned like the, the, the veterinarian thing and programs like that. Uh, one of our sponsors this year is the UT Medical Center. And um, there's been discussions, not necessarily with them, but other organizations who, who want to maybe create uh, a young professionals for a specific career path. So a, an organization for just new, doc new doctors, just 
financial people. And we're kind of the, we're the biggest organization in town. And so people come to us and ask for our, not necessarily guidance, but, you know, what lessons have we learned over the, however many dozen, like a dozen plus years of, that we've been here and how we can bet, help them better their organization by partnering that way. Part of my initiative is, is this year has been twofold. It's been to be more well-known and going to those organizations and speaking to the community so that when I go to a room, I say I'm from the Young Professionals of Knoxville and more and more people are saying, yes, I've heard of you. Yes, I've heard of you. The second goal for myself this year has been development, delivering on, on and establishing protocols going forward because we've just adopted our new leadership structure. And before we can branch out and like help these other organizations, we need to make sure that we're running at full speed and, and creating quality events for everybody. I think there's a lot of opportunities for an organization like ours to expand. And I'm excited to look to see what it looks like going forward because of organization, like programs like you were talking about, going out in the community, going out rurally and kind of engaging or having like sister organizations out there that we can partner with um, is, a, is a lovely goal. I love that idea. I think we can all agree and every conversation with every person we've had on the podcast has absolutely had that same thought. We can all agree that if younger people aren't interested in these communities, the work that's been paved for them, the road that's been paved will will not will not be a road that's traveled. And we need to make sure that Knoxville is the hub. We know that it is, but it's got to solidify itself first and then reaching out to the other spaces and then pulling younger people in um, as a connectivity conversation is definitely a goal worth having. I love that they've come to you with an idea of doing physicians only or finance only or realtor only. I think that is um, I think that is a valuable conversation to do, especially for physicians. I work with a company um, as, my, as my real estate firm, not just the podcast company, but I work with a company in New York whose specific job is to place physicians in rural communities. And I think that when people say the word rural, that I live in Lenore City, you know, my family's from Loudoun County. Loudoun County is considered a rural community, yet it's within seven miles to Knox, the Knox County line. And people don't understand what rural means sometimes. Uh, but this company specifically does young physicians, especially pediatricians, which are very lacking in places like right on the border of Tennessee and Kentucky, where there are less than 15,000 residents in an entire county area. And it's very difficult in conversation to convince someone of that young of an age to move to an area that small with no city community right out of college. So those kinds of that, that's a really interesting process for you to take on. I think that if anybody could do it, you probably could be the person to do it. So I definitely have faith in that. I'm behind that 100%. I think that's great. Um, I think it's a great idea. And You've given me so much information that we have literally taken our almost 30 minutes of time, which I appreciate all of with you. And I want to do a quick fire round. I always do this. So it's a surprise at the end. And you are obligated to answer. However, if you don't want to offend anybody, you can give a top three. So favorite Knoxville restaurant? Babalu. Ooh, why? What makes that your favorite? They do this steak with like pesto on top of it that anytime I'm like, I, I need protein, I'm like, oh, man, I wish I was at Bob Lou having that steak. And it's just, it's very conveniently like placed. Fair enough, fair enough. Favorite gas station? Gas station. Uh, Casey's? I will drive out of my way, depending on what area of town I am in, to either go to Weigel's or Casey's. There could be a gas station on the corner, and I'll be like, mm, I don't know that brand. I'm going to go four more miles down the road and hope my red light doesn't run me out of gas. <laughs> Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's just on the way to my gym. It's so conveniently placed on the way to my gym. Where's yeah. your gym? favorite gym? Uh, Frankie's Body Shop on Broadway. It used to be a um, a car repair shop. That's now a gym. So it's very gym. It's very car themed. It's one of like the two main locations that if you're doing professional bodybuilding that you're going to go. Um, so there's a lot of trainers. So there's there's very few people like me who's not a professional bodybuilder. Uh, so they have professional bodybuilders. And the other end of the spectrum is people doing PT, uh, like older people. And so there's just a, there's a big, there's a big discrepancy between what people are doing. Um, but I, I like the gym. I, I like the, the, the smallness of it, I guess. I like it. Favorite bar? Poor. I like poor as well. Or Maple Room. And then favorite pub or brewery? Yeehaw seems like a cop out because everybody loves Yeehaw. Gypsy Barrel House. Gypsy Barrel. What's like your favorite beer on tap? Uh, I don't love beer, but I like the Rain Dancer Cider. 
Okay. When I allow myself. Yeah. Gypsy is also opened a new location in Oak Ridge that we're probably going to do an event at later in the year. And it's a uh, mini golf. So it's a bar and a mini golf course. Winning the day. Um, yeah. That's a yeah, dream. Right? That's a dream. <laughs> that's, that's a dream. I love that. I love that. I see you just taught me something new. So that's, that's something for us mm-hmm. to go try. I love that because we're in Little City. It's, yeah. so it's right down Highway 91, which is also Oak Ridge Highway, which is also a 321. If for anybody out there that just got confused, call me. I'll walk you through it. It's on a map. I'll show it all to you. Don't worry. Lots of names for roads that don't exist anymore. And that's what they're going to tell you. So it's... <laughs> Yeah. Everybody's got a different name for the road. Everybody has a different name for a road. Thank you so much for your time today. Really quickly for everybody to wrap it up, where can people contact you if they want more information and want to get involved? Sure. So our website's www.ypnox.com or you can reach out to me at advancement at ypnox.com. I love it. Thank you so much. I'll definitely direct you to the right people if you if it's not me. I love you. Thank you. You're like you're, you're a pilot. You're also... You're like, you, you know enough about the guys that do this. You're like, I can do this. I can direct this. I can do it. I love you. You can, can do it. I have every faith you can do it. Thank you for your time today. I am very excited to see how much you grow. And if you make it into the Loudoun County area, give us a phone call. We're always, always happy to assist. I'll probably sponsor one of my own employees. So I think that that's an opportunity there. Didn't even know you could do it. So I learned a lot today. Everybody, I hope you learned a lot today. I'm Julia Hurley, your host for Connect the Knox connecting Knoxville to the nation. Until next time. Thank you for tuning into the show. Make sure to like and subscribe. Leave a five-star review on your podcast player of choice. And if you would like information on moving to Knoxville, send me a private message. As always, this is Julia Hurley connecting Knoxville to the nation.